Facebook, <clears throat> Prophet David Taylor here. Don't wait, I'll wait till the thing gets through spinning to be sure that <laughs> everybody can see me and hear me. There we go. What's up, Facebook? Prophet David Taylor here for your weekly live prophetic word. Uh, now, y'all gonna have to forgive me because I just made two kinds of chicken. I just made some uh, regular style oven baked chicken. But I also made some oven baked southern style, which is like the extra crispy. And I made my homemade sauce with the coating in it all, oh, all oh, with the breadcrumbs in it all. Oh. So y'all have to forgive me today. But I am here for your weekly live prophetic word. And I praise God for the opportunity to uh, bring you a prophetic word from the Lord. Now, I don't do what I do for money. I do what I do because I'm called by God to prophesy and release the word of God. But if you would like to sow into my ministry, if you would like to give something towards me to bless me, you can do so in uh, one of three ways. You can PayPal me. Uh, my PayPal is at uh, paypal.com uh, slash Prophet David Taylor. You can use the Zelle app. Uh, and that email is uh, Prophet David Taylor at gmail.com. And then you can also use a cash app. And my cash app is dollar sign DNT and then two I's, DMT2, but not the number two, DMTII, capital I, I. So if you'd like to sow something uh, into my ministry, I would appreciate that. That would bless me because when you sow money to what I'm doing, it helps me expand. There are programs that I'm trying to set up that I need funding to do, like working with uh, some homeless people. It's a program I have called uh, Meet in My House. And uh, obviously some other books I'm gonna write and release. So you're helping me expand my ministry and do more of what God has called me to do when you sow into my ministry. So again, I don't do it for money, but if you would like to sow and bless me and bless his ministry, I, uh, it would definitely be appreciated and it'll go to expanding the ministry. Okay. All right. So we definitely have a uh, fresh prophetic word from the Lord. And let me tell you something. There's nothing like a fresh rhema prophetic word from God. There's nothing like it. There's absolutely nothing like a word from the Lord. Okay, so let's say a word of prayer and we're going to dive right in. Thank you, Father, for this day. Uh, Father, I come to you as a surrendered vessel, just thanking you, just in all of you as always. And thanking you for the opportunity to serve you in your kingdom uh, in these last and evil days. And thank you for an opportunity to know you, oh God. So please forgive me for any sin, wash me clean, and fill me with the Holy Spirit, oh God, and let Everything that's said be what you want said. Have your way. I must de decrease so you can increase. And I die to myself so you can live through me and speak your word and have your way. And I thank you for it. We give you all the glory. And thank you that you might be glorified and that the saints might be edified and that the demons might be terrified. Because we need to hear from you in these days. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray, the righteous one, the holy one, the Alpha and the Omega the true and living Son of God. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. <clears throat> Today's prophetic word is know me. Today's prophetic word is know me or and or know me. It's know me and or know me. Okay. So let me give you the scripture references and then we will do some prophetic teaching and exegesis, and we will hear what the Holy Ghost has to say. First scripture I want to give you is Hebrews 8.11. Hebrews 8.11 is quoting Jeremiah. It's quoting Jeremiah uh, 31, but it adds a few things, and so uh, I want to read uh, verse 10, 11, and 12 in Hebrews chapter 8. So Hebrews chapter 8, uh, just to give you a little bit of background about Hebrews, Scholars don't all agree on who wrote Hebrews. Some think that Paul wrote it. <clears throat> Some think that Apollos wrote it. I'm one of Paul's contemporaries. And some think that Luke wrote it, the same one that wrote the Gospel of Luke. Uh, one thing is for sure, well, two things are for sure. Number one, it was written by someone highly intelligent and someone that fully understood the Old Testament covenant. And number two, it was written specifically to Jewish Christians. Okay, so that's why it's called Hebrews. It was written to what we call today. You know, they have organizations called Jews for Jesus. 
And uh, the general term is Messianic believers. And what that means is it's Jews that have accepted Jesus the Christ as the Messiah. Okay? So it was written specifically to that group of people, to people that are Jewish. Remember that being Jewish is an ethnicity and a culture and a religion. So it's written to people of that ethnicity, of that culture, and of the Old Testament faith that have converted to Christianity, that have accepted Jesus Christ as Messiah and now believe that they are under the New Testament of God and that the Old Testament is done away with. That's who the book of Hebrews was written to and for. But obviously we can glean things from it, us Gentiles, but just to give you a little bit of background, okay? So Hebrews chapter 8, verses 10, 11, and 12, I'm reading out of the Berean Study Bible. For this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and inscribe them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will each one teach his neighbor or his brother, saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their, their iniquities and will remember their sins no more. Okay, let me read verse 11 again in the <clears throat> New Living Translation. And they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, You should know the Lord, for everyone from the least to the greatest will know me already. Okay, uh, let's read the King James Bible. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. Okay? That's, again, Hebrews chapter 8, verses 10, 11, and 12. And I reread verse 11. Let's read the Old Testament scripture where that quote is pulled from. That is pulled from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31. Jer Jeremiah is in the Old Testament. It is uh, He is an Old Testament prophet. He is a major prophet. And remember, I tell you all the time, that a major prophet, when you hear that phrase, major prophet, it does not mean that their messages were more important than the minor prophets. What it means is that their books were longer. So when you hear the phrase major prophet, it means that they had extremely long books. And when you hear minor prophets, most of the minor prophets, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zechariah, Zephaniah, their books are three, four, five chapters long. Isaiah, Jeremiah are into 50s and 60s in terms of chapters. So that's what that phrase, major prophet, means. So Jeremiah, uh, Old Testament prophet, when Israel was sinning and messing up badly and had turned from God and had turned fully to idolatry and was being ransacked and taken in captivity and all kind of bad things were happening, very similar to what's going on in America right now. Okay, so Jer just to give you a little background, Jeremiah 30, chapter 31, we're going to read verses 33 and 34. Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 33 and 34 out of the Berean Study Bible. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and inscribe it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will each man teach his neighbor or his brother, saying, Know the Lord. Because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and will remember their sins no more. Okay, so that's where Hebrews 8 gets the quote from. One more scripture I want to read. I want to read Jeremiah chapter 9 uh, in verses 23 and 24. Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. Berean study Bible again. This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, nor the strong man in his strength, nor the wealthy man in his riches. But let him who boasts, boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises loving devotion, justice, and righteousness on the earth. For I delight in these things, declares the Lord. Wow. Wow. Just the reading of that alone ought to blow you back in your seat. It constantly amazes me when I hear some people say 
that the Bible is old, that the Bible is not relevant, that the Bible was written, you know, multi-thousand years, years ago, it was written by an old white man, that uh, the Bible has no meaning, it's archaic, and they don't understand why people would even read it or believe in it. I stop by to tell you that the Word of God is a lie, that it is not so much who God wrote the Bible through, the vessel is not the thing. It's the God of the Bible, and knowing Him is the point of the Scriptures. And those two verses I just read, Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, are spot on, 100% speaking to where we are today. Okay? Where we are today is what those scriptures are speaking to. Uh, so let's go over them again. <clears throat> this is what the Lord says. Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, nor the strong man in his strength, nor the wealthy man in his riches. Why? Because we're in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. And God has just, just shut all of that down. God has just shown the world that all of that, the stuff that we boast in, the stuff that we think is important, our physical strength, how we look, our wisdom or man's wisdom, uh, or our money, doesn't mean anything. How has any of that been able to help during this time? Remember, this has been going on since about the middle of March in terms of the lockdown. It's just two and a half months, but it's felt like forever because the virus hit America, at least it's acknowledged to have hit in January. The lockdown happened about the second week of March. Okay, that's just two and a half months ago because today's the last day of May. That's just two and a half months. Okay, and in these last two and a half months, what has physical strength meant? What has our wisdom meant? Because they can't even figure out what the virus is. It keeps morphing. They can't figure out a solid cure. They're just guessing. They're changing everything every day, changing estimates as to when a cure will be ready. Changing, you know, now they're saying that the virus doesn't, doesn't attach to surfaces or you can't get it from surfaces. There's so many things that's different from what they originally said, you know. So what good is man's wisdom? What good has it done? And then money. This thing has shut down money, shut down businesses, shut down entire cities, shut down states, shut down the world, shut down the stock market. So what good has the money done? But rather, moving on to verse 24, but let him who boasts, boast in this. God said, if you're going to boast, don't boast in any of that stuff that he listed in verse 23. God said, if you're going to boast, boast in this. Well, boast in what, Lord? Boast that you understand and know me. Ah, the Lord said, boast that you understand and know me. That word understand coming out of the Hebrew, it means to be, uh, it means circumspect, it means intelligent. Okay, I heard my pastor say a couple of weeks ago something that was just so on point, so powerful. My pastor, Apostle John Eckhart, said, that we need to have knowledge of God, but we need to have correct knowledge of God. Because some people go so far so far on teaching God's love and grace and mercy that they forget justice and judgment. And some people go so hard on justice and judgment they become critical and start telling people that nobody's saved but them and, and everybody's going to hell and they've totally missed love and grace and mercy. Because God is a person, not a set of rules. I keep saying that. I keep saying that over and over again. People keep trying to reduce God to religion, to a set of rules. God is a person. And because he's a person, that's why we're persons, because we're made in his image. But because he's a person, that's why he's somebody you have to get to know. So that's why you hear me say all the time that there are three levels of word. There's the written word, which is the Bible. There's the living word, which is Jesus. And then there's the rhema word, the fresh breathed word of God, which comes through the apostolic and the prophetic. Okay, you need all three. You need to know the written word. You need to have a personal relationship with Christ. And you need to walk in the apostolic and the prophetic and at least expose yourself to both ministries. Why? Because you're going to need all three as you walk through life. 
okay the lord many times speaks to us in our private time in our quiet time he speaks to us in our inner chamber he speaks to us in our bedroom he drops things in our spirit he speaks to us in dreams but he doesn't tell us everything sometimes you need confirmation from a prophet sometimes you need interpretation of a dream from a prophet sometimes you need someone to expand and expound on what god has already showed you because the lord doesn't always tell us everything and he, he never tells us everything all at once and he never gives no one person all the revelation okay so that's why you need all three levels of word you need to know the written word the bible you need to know the living word which is jesus okay jesus is the word of god alive and in action but you also need the rhema word the prophetic word the apostolic word the fresh breathe i mean rhema means fresh breathe right now word that it comes through the apostolic and the prophetic you need all three to get everything that god has for you in this life and if you don't have all three operating in your life there's no way you're going to get everything that god wants you to have it will not happen so god says we need to understand and know him now coming out of hebrew that phrase and knows means just what it sounds uh they adore to know okay but <clears throat> remember that the lord said in matthew 7 that there are going to be plenty of people that try to enter his kingdom and say lord lord and all those people are going to enter and those people are going to bring their works before the lord and say look at all the stuff we did and we did so many wonderful things in your name and the Lord's going to say, depart from me, get out of my face. I never what? I never knew you. We were never intimate. We never actually had a close relationship. We never fellowshiped. We never loved. We never shared our secrets. We never opened our hearts because God wants you to draw close to him and open your heart to him and he will open his heart to you. But if you don't do that, then God says you have no reward coming from him. He's not interested in your religion. He's not interested in all your efforts to show how saved you are. He's interested in what he says in the scripture and you knowing him. So God said, if you're going to boast, boast that you understand, okay? I'm going to give you a scripture on that understanding, okay? The scripture I'm going to give you on that is 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy 2.15, coming out of the King James Version, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. One more time, study to show thyself approved, okay? Study to show thyself approved, uh, a worker who does, does not need to be ashamed, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Why would God tell us that we have to rightly divide the word of truth? That's because it's possible to wrongly divide the word of truth. Okay? So as God says here in the scripture, you have to understand and know me. Okay? So that means, once again, that God is somebody you have to get to know. I'm going to give you uh, another scripture. Okay, I'm going to give you the scripture coming out of the Psalms. I'm going to give you Psalms 103 and 7. He made known his, uh, I'm reading out of King James, he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The children of Israel saw what God did and what he could do, but God made Moses to know who he was and how he was his ways the way of god there's a certain way that god acts for example for example the vast majority of the time when the lord speaks and when he speaks to you he's going to speak in a still small voice and it's going to be so very quiet and so very gentle and it is in fact sometimes so quiet until unless you quiet your spirit unless you turn off the tv turn off your phone turn off your ipad turn off your laptop and quiet yourself and fast and, and block out the distractions of the world unless you quiet yourself you can miss it you're gonna miss it if you don't spend time being quiet before the lord because most of the time when god speaks it's in that very small very very quiet voice 
You have to know him to know that. That's his way. He's not a shouter. He's not one to raise his voice. If the Lord raises his voice, that means you haven't been listening. You haven't been listening to the still small voice. You haven't been listening to the gentle prompts because the spirit of God will very gently touch your heart. He will very gently touch your spirit. He will very gently lead you and guide you to where Christ wants you to be. But he's not going to force you. Okay, but if you haven't been listening to the, the gentle touches, the gentle leading, if you haven't been listening to the still small voice, then the Lord might have to raise his voice to get your attention. Okay, but it is generally not his way to yell. Do you see what I mean by that? That's the way of the Lord, and you have to know him to know that. So that's why God is saying that we need to understand him, and we need to understand and know him. And the scripture says that we shouldn't just be like the children of Israel and just know his acts, just seek his hand, just seek what he can do. We're supposed to know him, his ways. What kind of God are you? How are you as a person? Okay. <clears throat> then it goes on to say that I am the Lord. Uh, if God hasn't taught us anything in the pandemic, then I don't know what it's going to take. If God uh, hasn't taught us through what we've been going through, through all of 2020, because the pandemic hit America in January and the lockdown started happening about the middle of March. If God hasn't shown us through this pandemic that he is God, that he is able to shut down anything that man can make, anything that man can build, anything that man can think, God can shut it down. If God hasn't shown us what it says in Jeremiah 9, 24, that I am the Lord, okay, that I am the Lord, that I, says God, am the Lord. If we haven't learned it by now, I don't know what it's going to take for us to learn. I can't possibly understand what it would take for us to learn uh, if, if we haven't learned through this pandemic, okay, because what again what do we have that's still working what do we have that we built what do we have that we cared about what industry you know everything got shut down and people don't know what to do people don't know how to fix it i know that people are trying to reopen now and do whatever whatever we haven't been able to come up with a cure because the scripture says i am the lord okay then he goes on to say who exercises loving devotion justice and righteousness on the earth who exercises loving devotion. Loving devotion, okay? Out of the Hebrew, that phrase loving devotion means kindness, piety, reproof, and beauty. Wow. God exercises kindness, piety, reproof. That means God will correct you when you're wrong and say, no, that ain't right. And beauty, okay? Uh, he exercises that. Loving devotion, that's how he is. Then justice and righteousness on the earth. Justice is pretty self-explanatory, but coming out of the Hebrew, that word means a verdict, a sentence, formal decree, divine law, penalty, justice, privilege, or style. That's why you got to go back to the Hebrew because it's such a broad range of meaning in the original Hebrew and Greek. And the Lord is saying that he's the one that releases a verdict, a sentence, a formal decree, divine law, penalty, justices. Of privileges and style that all comes from God okay justice and righteousness okay rightness subjectively and objectively rightness comes from God and then on the earth okay so God is the one that declares and decrees the sentences and the judgments and then he says for I delight in these things declares the Lord in other words that makes God happy he delights in his loving devotion in his beauty his, his repute Reproof, his piety, his kindness. He delights in justice, in releasing the sentences and the judgments. He delights in rightness. Okay? So the Lord says that we're supposed to know him. Okay, I feel a prophetic word coming from the Holy Ghost. And here it is. For behold, my people, the days come and now are. And the day has come and now is that those that know me will be able to move forward and make it through, make it through 
what's going on on earth right now and those that don't know me will be left behind those that don't know me will have the door shut and they will be denied entry and those that don't know me uh, will not be able to move forward into the next phase and may see my face no more in this life says the spirit of the living God and what that means is that you're going to die that your days on earth will be over and then you see the Lord again on the other side when you face in the judgment after the spirit steps out of your body but there'll be no more of God talking to you in your moral body now on earth that's what that means that's a rough word but if it's what the Holy Ghost says and so that means now more than ever what we're supposed to do and what we're supposed to teach our children and our children's children is to know the Lord and understand him and to be sure that we know him so that when justice and judgment is on earth like it is now and literally cities are burning we have literally come to the point uh, once again in America because this is this is the first time it was like this in the 60s we've had a civil war this isn't the first time but it's the first time in this generation that we've seen uh, uh, destruction of cities and everything being on fire like this and this is the first time in all of our lifetimes that we've seen a global pandemic like this that has shut down everything okay so if this doesn't convince you that now is the time to know the Lord to seek his face to have an intimate personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Christ okay if you are already a believer if these last two and a half months haven't taught you anything they should have taught you they should have made you face whether or not you actually have a relationship with Jesus or not excuse me whether or not you actually have a relationship with Jesus or not you should have figured that out in these last two and a half months because we have we have had nothing but solitude we've had nothing but quiet we've had nothing but lockdown we have nothing but shut down and shut in so if God hasn't spoken to you in the quiet or you haven't heard him in the quiet these last two and a half months should have let you know beyond a shadow of a doubt whether or not you actually have a relationship with the Christ or not and the Lord is saying both through the written word and both through the rhema prophetic word that it's the time to know him and that if we know him we'll be able to make it through what's happening here and move forward to the next phase because there is life after this not sure what it's going to look like but I know some other things are coming if we don't repent if we don't turn from our ways and turn to the Lord with all of our heart soul mind and strength then I know worse things are coming and I know what some of those things are but if we do turn to the Lord then God will hear from heaven he'll hear our prayers and forgive our sin and heal our land if we repent if we turn to him we humble ourselves and pray and turn from our wicked ways and seek his face not his hand not God what can you do for me but God who are you God do I know you God are we intimate God are you pleased with our level of intimacy or not the Holy Ghost just told you that now is the time to make that sure in your life and if that doesn't mean anything to you and you don't want to put Christ first you don't want to prioritize then some people are just going to die then you're just going to run out of days and you're not going to make it through this some people might be consigned to wandering the wilderness and that just means you're going to grow old and, and just keep doing the same things over and over and over again and you're going to grow old and die and there's going to be no growth and no change no revelation no nothing in your life from God you're going to get stuck on tradition and religion and you're never going to move off it until you die I don't want to be in any of those groups I don't want to be a Christian that the Lord stops talking to I don't want to be a, a Christian that's more in love with religion and tradition instead of Christ and I don't want to be a Christian that's doing a bunch of busy work but doesn't actually know Jesus I want to know him okay so that's the prophetic word for today it's a sobering word but it's a sobering time what more has to happen for the Lord to get our attention let me say that one more time what more has to happen upon the face of the earth for God to get our attention to call us back to him 
Now, I've heard some people say that they don't believe in God. I have, in fact, heard plenty of people say that I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. Well, I stopped by to tell you, I don't believe in you. What do you mean, Prophet Taylor? I mean, I don't believe in atheists. Because some people say, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in atheists. What do you mean by that? What I mean by that is, ain't no such thing as somebody that doesn't believe in God. You know how I know that? Because you will when you need him. How is it that people instinctively know to look up and pray? How is it that people know to seek God when they're in trouble? How is it that people seek uh, men and women of God, bishops, deacons, elders, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers? How is it that people seek that when they're in trouble? How is that if you don't believe in God? Mm-hmm. There's no such thing as a human being because we are made in God's image. God constructed our bodies from the clay of the earth and then he breathed his breath into our bodies and we became living souls. And what that means is that we're made in his image and we're like him and he is truth. And our spirits are calibrated by God to recognize truth when we hear it. Did you know that? That's why you can know truth when you hear it because you come from truth. Our spirits are calibrated to recognize love. All living things recognize love, okay? Why is that? It's because we come from God and God is love. When wrong things are done, okay, when wrong things are done, there's something inside of the human spirit as we're seeing by the protests. There's something inside of the human spirit that, that gets angry and cries out for justice and says, that ain't right, and cries out for justice. Where do you think we get that from? We get that from our creator, the one who made us in his image, okay? And if you still don't believe, I stop by to tell you, you didn't invent love, you didn't invent truth, and you didn't invent justice. Those concepts predate you. So for all of those of you that say that you don't believe in God, I don't believe you. Love didn't start with you, truth didn't start with you, Justice didn't start with you, and it's not going to end with you, okay? Those things are a part of who God is, as we just read in the scripture. And when he breathed into Adam the breath of life, when we became living souls, they became a part of us. And that's why we love, that's why we recognize truth when we hear it, and that's why when wrongs are done, we cry out for justice. That's why, okay? So don't tell me you don't believe in God, because you will when you need him. So he has raised his voice to get our attention worldwide. So as the Spirit of God just said, now is the time. Now is the time to seek his face. Now is the time to know his voice. Now is the time to learn his ways. Now is the time to turn from our own ways and turn unto him that we might again become pleasing in his sight and he would heal our land. All right, amen and God bless you. Like I said at the top of the hour, I don't minister for money, but those of you that want to sow in my ministry, you help me expand what I can do when you sow, so you can give at PayPal. On my PayPal is Prophet David Taylor. You can give on your Zelle app. The email is uh, prophetdavidtaylor at gmail.com. And you can give from my cash app. It's dollar sign DMT2, dollar sign DMT, and then two capitalized, not the number two, but two capitalized, DMT2 you know, dollar sign DMT2 on the cash app, okay? My quarter two prophetic devotion is out. I'm working on releasing an EP and some other songs. You can always check out the music I've already released on my YouTube channel, and that's our Prophet David Taylor and Shades of the Cross on YouTube, okay? So thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank you to those of you that are watching me live. Uh, God bless you, and thank you to those of you that are watching the replay on Facebook Live, on Periscope, and on YouTube and God bless you and shout out to those of you that are listening to me on the podcast. May the word of the Lord be a blessing to you, to you and your children for both now and unto all generations. Praise God and thank you so much. Uh, next Sunday is the first Sunday, first Sunday in June. And uh, so I will be here next Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for our weekly live prophetic word. And then not this Thursday, but a week from this Thursday, I'll be here for No More Genies 
on Thursday night, 7 o'clock p.m. for my series on No More Genies, where we're working on getting rid of our genie concept of God and studying what the scripture actually says. All right? Amen, and God bless you. And remember, oh, wait, I didn't go in the spirit and ask the Holy Ghost, was there any more? Hold on, let me do that before we go. Okay, we're good. So amen, and remember <clears throat> that now is the time to know the Lord. God bless.